Hello, and welcome to our show, For the Love of Animals, the show about animals and for animals. We're really glad that you joined us today. I'm Greg Bauer, one of your co-hosts, and unfortunately, my other co-host, Darlene Pigford, is under the weather today, so I'm going to be carrying on alone. I want to tell you a little bit about a couple of shows that will be coming up that I think you will find interesting. Rhoda Bolton, who did a bird show with us several months ago, is coming back to talk about uh, guinea pigs, gerbils, hamsters, and rabbits. And our director will be very happy to hear about that. A second show is going to feature Dr. Rennie Church, who will to talk about the care of newborn kittens and puppies. But for right now, we've got a really great show for you today, one that uh, uh, you'll remember, I think, for a long time. The title of it is A Pet, Viewer, a Pet Lover's Guide to the Library. And to that end, our guest today is Anita Moore from the McCracken County Public Library. Welcome, Anita. We're so glad you're here today. Thank you very much, Greg. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some things with you from the library. Oh, and, and unfortunately, we probably will have a lot more than we can do in this short time I'm afraid period. so. But let's uh, start out today by uh, asking you a little bit about your fur family, Anita. Well, right at the moment, uh, my fur family consists of um, three cats, five dogs, and up until a month ago, I could say two horses, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. we just lost one. So oh, we're down that's... we're down to one horse now. Oh, okay. Well, that uh, I'm sure keeps you and the rest of the family busy out on the farm, then, doesn't it? It keeps us very busy. <laughs> and most of those, I will say, have been uh, pretty much. There's only a couple of them that we wrote the checks for. The rest of them have been pretty much all drop-offs or people's unwanted that we have taken in and, and uh, have given them a good home. And not to mention the fact that they have given us hours of pleasure. Oh, that, that they certainly are good for that, aren't they? Um, well, before we begin, uh, very quickly, let me say, Anita, of course, is from the McCracken County Public Library, and I want to give a little plug to the library at this point. Since Darlene and I have moved to Paducah uh, two, two and a half years ago, we have found that the McCracken County Public Library has a wonderful set of resources. Uh, in all areas and they have a very friendly and courteous staff who are more than willing to give you help so let's give them a good plug to start with uh, Anita. Thank, thank you very much I agree with you there's a wonderful staff there and they we have a huge selection and we we pride ourselves in being able to help our patrons coming into the library. And as you'll see today in Anita's discussion uh, there are a number of resources that maybe people don't think about for the library but let's get to the topic then. Um, we want to take a look today and split it into the areas of nonfiction and fiction. And these are resources that can deal with pets. Right. So, Anita, I'm going to throw it over to you and let's talk about some of these resources. All right. Well, obviously, we could not bring everything from the library, <laughs> no. and it was very difficult to decide to, to uh, deciding what I needed to pick. But I've picked a selection here, a uh, large variety, just to give our viewers some ideas. And we have some books up in the in the second floor, which is our youth department, okay. that consist of, of of different types of books. It's all broken down into elementary, juveniles, young adults. And we're going to start off with the what we consider the uh, the e-books, the early books. And this one is My First Puppy, and it's a touch and feel. So mm -hmm. this is getting the child interested very early into what a puppy is like with the parents, and they can go through here and touch and feel and all this about the fur, the bowl, and all of these. So from that angle, I thought that would be something yes. to introduce that yes. first child to what a puppy is like. We have another one up there that I thought was really cute, and it was called I Love Dogs. And it has some really nice graphics in there, different things about the little children interacting with the dogs, you know, again, trying to get that child who's never maybe been used to a pet or whatever acclimated into um, getting used to maybe a pet coming into the mm -hmm. family. Okay. This one I just grabbed as I was walking through there last weekend, and it was some new books that I saw. It was called Learning to Read Pre-Level, and they had oh. several of these, and these were farm animals okay. that they have. And there, and again, the different graphics and everything with uh, here's like, here's the dog, here are three sleepy puppies, and it talks about the different parts and that type of thing. Then, uh, again, still, as you're going to maybe a little bit more advanced, there's one here called Pretzel. 
and it's about a dachshund and mm -hmm. the different things that they get into. We have a lot of the serendipity books that are very, very popular with the kids. I grab Leo the Lop Tail too. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, there are a lot of us older librarians in there that we talk about how we like to read these when we were kids and now we're reading them to our children, the ones who have younger children. And he has a whole complete line of these. Okay. Going into the juvenile books now, I picked some with Shiloh, Shot mm -hmm. this, which the movies came out. They're very popular. I've got Shiloh Season here, and I've got Saving Shiloh. We have those, and there's a, a whole bunch of different books. Mm -hmm. These are just a couple that I took. Before we go any further, Radita, let me tell our viewers that we uh, have all of these books are going to be up on the uh, website for the, uh, for the library, and that is mclib.net. And if they go to the home page, they can choose the uh, uh, choice of um, adults, and even though they're children's books too, also then to the uh, uh, happenings, and then down to the title of the program, and that all of these books that you're talking about will be listed up there. Yes, we've okay. talked to the technical person, and she's okay. going to put them all on there so people can see them. A we, list. We'd like to take a break now for a moment and talk about a happy tale, one of Anita's. On animals. Hi, my name is Callie, and I'm a calico cat about two and a half years old. On Christmas Eve a couple of years ago, Anita's son Jason found me in a tree just outside Anita's house. I was cold and lonely and didn't know what was going to happen to me. Jason took me inside and I felt much better. Anita asked her husband Keith if I could stay, and he said no because they have too many animals already. They were already five dogs, three cats, two horses. It didn't look good for me, even though Anita and Jason wanted me to stay. That night, Jason and Anita went to the computer and composed a poem and made it sound like I had written it. They gave it to Keith the next morning. Keith read the poem and it went like this. A Christmas thanks for everything, for letting me stay downstairs. Your house was a great place and sending me away wouldn't be fair. A special present to the nice lady, that would be me, a cat. She'd be so happy, so what do you say to that? A special present from Santa and free, a little calico kitty, that would be me. Needless to say, it really helped, and now I have a wonderful and loving home, thanks to Anita, Jason, and Keith. And yes, I do believe in Santa Claus. We hope you enjoyed that happy tale about Callie, and it just goes to show you how smart cats can be that they can write poetry. <laughs> so we, we hope you enjoyed that. We're visiting today with Anita Moore from the McCracken County Public Library and talking about some of the fiction uh, resources that they have there. And Anita, let's continue our discussion. Well, we'll continue with still with the juvenile books. There's a whole series of the Challenger books written by Terry Farley. And I just chose one called a Phantom Stallion. Okay. A lot of girls, even boys, love about horses, so I chose this. Then there's another one here that's very, very popular at the library, and it's called uh, Hank the Cow Dog. Oh. And the, I picked up a couple of them here. The one I have here is The Curse of the Incredible Priceless Corn Cob. And Hank the Cow Dog <laughs> talks all the way through it, and he gets into the most unbelievable situations and so forth. And then there's another one that I had here relating to the subject that we're on. Again, Hank the Cow Dog, Let Sleeping Dogs Lie. And, and these are uh, books on CD? These are, these are just regular books. Oh, regular we, books. And then we okay. also, I also have some where I grab where we have them on CD, okay. CD too. So you can listen to them when you're in the car. And you'll be surprised there's a lot of adults who listen to these and read them. They enjoy them. Very popular series. I've and I've got to get some of those. <laughs> I, I, I highly recommend it. Then also, I threw in one of the ones that my son introduced me to several years ago, and this is the Redwall series, and okay. uh, Brian Jakes. And it, it's all about the, the Abbey and the mice, and they're fighting against, basically it's good against evil, the mice against the bad otters, and, and so forth like that. So there's a whole series about this that really would introduce your children to like a, uh -huh. the fantasy with all the animals, animal characters in it. What do we have for adults in the fiction area? The adults, very, very hard, but I did try to grab a couple of them there, and I chose 
there's a, there's a series a lot of people don't don't know about, and I don't know if she's written any new books lately, but it's called The Jennifer Grey Veterinarian Mystery, and there's probably oh. about a, 10, 11, 12 of these, and she has all different, it's a veterinarian and talks about the difference. They solve mysteries, and she has her little animals in the veterinarian clinic. Mm -hmm. This one is called The Pink Rabbit Caper. Then okay. I have another one here called The Tenacious Terrier Caper. So, of course, maybe it's a little misleading when we say for adults because we're all still kids at heart, aren't we? Well, they? that's true, but these are <laughs> these are listed in, in with the adults, for sure. Okay. Then Susan Conant has a, a bunch of ones out. Uh, she, has, um, she has just started a new series. She had dogs before, and now she's doing uh, cats and oh, okay. and uh, she's uh, but the one I have here is the gates of heaven and my mother just read the cat one and these are what they call cozy mysteries oh, okay. then I have another one that she's done and the other title is the wicked flea and she shows dogs and uh, again they call them cozy mysteries okay. there's uh, Sue Sue Henry has some new ones and uh, she has lives in Alaska she has dog sleds so that's a different concept, you know, where she has the dog sleds and there's always a mystery going on up in Alaska. She has a whole series with these. And then pretty much, I would imagine all of your viewers are familiar with the Cat Who books. Mm -hmm. And we've, yes. we talked about those. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. It must be, I don't know, 20, 30 some of these. And she always has some different, always something about the cat in. And this one I, I have here is the cat who brought down the house. Okay. And but what do we have in the way of uh, DVDs and CDs, Okay, uh, Anita? We can talk about those. I just brought this one home from the library the, uh, this weekend, and my mother and my husband and I watched it. This one is called Lost in the Woods, the movie. And it's, okay. I highly recommend this one. It's, and it has, these are real animals, and they just have people voices, and it just, and two raccoons are lost, the baby deer is lost, maybe lost, maybe not, trying to get back to its mother. Very, very good. I, that's um, one I want to check out. I, I, I hope you do. <laughs> Black Beauty. Um, again, love, children love horses mm -hmm. and yes. so forth. And then we're all familiar with the air, the air buds. We have several of this. So we have Airbud, and then we also have Airbud World Pup. And we had some comments before we even started taping today regarding this one, Homeward Bound, yes. about how that's children's favorite. It's Everybody, a classic. A classic. Adults love it. And then uh, the Black Stallion. Okay. And then. This show wouldn't be complete without me not bringing something regarding Benji. So, <laughs> of you, course. So this this one particular one is Benji the Hunted. Mm -hmm. And then we have some other ones here that uh, now those were all upstairs movies. And then we have these are still these are called young adults. These are back in the back area. We have where we had a Shiloh the books. We also have Shiloh the movie. This one's Shiloh season, and this is Shiloh two. Still, I mean, there's, I don't who knows, probably number three is in the works. Because of Win Dixie was very popular a year ago and still gets checked out a lot. It's a delightful movie. This one I threw in because this one's older and I remember this one. This is the old Disney movies with Suzanne Flechette called The Ugly, The Ugly Dachshund. And it was yes. a funny, yes. funny Disney movie. For, so remember the people <laughs> who are our age, they might enjoy that one. Yes. This one was very popular this summer, Dreamer. It's, it's uh, inspired by a true story. Uh, we have Medicine Hat Stallion. Again, you, all you have to do is just kind of look, know what you're looking for, and you're going to find all kinds of things with animals. And let's not forget the classic Animal Farm that, that yes. we read as, yes. when we were in school. And I deviated just a little bit from cats and dogs for the bird lovers, and I know you probably have in oh, your audience. Yes, I we do. I did Polly, and, and we also have lots of birds books. I didn't bring anything, but we do have lots of those. But I mm -hmm. threw Polly in. And again, it went back to the Disney movie with that darn cat. Yes. A again, a, a, <laughs> was funny. a funny movie. Yes, I, I, I really, really enjoy it. Mm. And then a couple years ago, uh, Sea Biscuit came out, and this mm -hmm. one was very, uh, I loved it. I just, uh, the book was out, it was popular, the movie was, and um, uh, I thought it was just, I thought it was a well done movie. Yes. And then this one is a, a fairly new one, it just came in just a few weeks ago, uh, called uh, Barnyard, and it's the original Party Animals. A little bit, <laughs> you get my, some adult humor in it type thing, but it's, it's funny and, and the animation and it's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. 
And while we're sitting here and looking through all these, we want to remind our viewers that all of these books are up on the website for the McCracken County Library, which you will see on your screen. And uh, this, uh, all the ones that uh, need us talking about it, plus a lot of the others that we're not able to talk about today are up there as a list. So uh, you don't worry about have to, write, have to write these things down because they're all up there on the website. Do I have time to talk about a few more DVDs? Um, Yes, we have. Uh, I'll tell you what, I think we'll move that over just a little bit because we need to take a break now. Okay. And um, one of the regular features that we have on our show is called Forget Me Not. And we have uh, today one of the animals that Anita talked about just a little bit ago that had passed away. And in honor of that particular animal, which we'll see in just a second, Anita has made a contribution to the Graves County Humane Society. So let's give a listen to the Forget Me Not. Many years ago, we moved from Louisville to a farm in Graves County. We brought with us a female horse named Heavenly Day, and this is the story of where Midday begins. In 1991, I went back to Louisville and saw Midday at the same place where we had seen Heavenly Day. Midday was Heavenly Day's brother. The owner was going to dispose of Midday to a slaughterhouse. But on the spot, I said no, he's coming to live with us, and gave the man a check. He came home with me and soon was romping in the pasture with his sister. For 15 years, he was a constant companion to my mother, Annabelle. He loved treats and kisses and gave lots of kisses back. He was never broken for riding, but had a wonderful loving home with his sister. In 1997, Heavenly Day died, and Midday missed her terribly. He was never quite the same after that. In December 2006, Midday passed away too. We greatly miss him, but have very fond memories of his life with our family. Wasn't that a wonderful story about Midday? If you have an animal that you would like to include on our Forget Me Not series, you can send your uh, story to 3734 Buyer Lane here in Paducah, 42001, or call us at 270-443-8330. We'd like to turn now to another regular feature of our program, Pam Wells, our resident poet, as you know, writes a number of poems about animals, and she's prepared one for our program today called, We Called Him Rainbow. Let's give a listen. We called him Rainbow. He was skinny and frightened and shivering with cold, wet from the rain and not very old. We'll just take him in for shelter one night but he was desperate and starved and he gulped down each bite. His ribs jutted out through his dirty blonde hair. Soon his weary eyes closed from a long soulful stare. Just a few days, we'll just keep him till then. He needs food and care and the love of a friend. We called him Rainbow for the joy that he brought from that dark stormy night with the lessons he taught of devotion and love and loyalty too. Rain was a great dog, so eager and true. How do you give up a dog with such heart? We knew he was special right from the start. The days turned to weeks as he blossomed with love. Rain found his home he'd always dreamed of. That was another wonderful poem by Pam. And if you would like to get in touch with her, she does a lot with humane education. You can reach her at area code 270 575-3822 or at petlix at yahoo.com and she goes by the stage name of Miss Bunny and she always brings her little friend Scooby Sue with her so if you're interested in that she does a wonderful job for Boy Scouts, the schools, etc. So get in contact with Pam, you'll be glad that you did. Anita, one of the questions that comes up is uh, while we have all these resources at the library, how does one go down and check these materials out? It's and quite, who can do this? It's quite easy. All you have to do is have a library card and be a patron. Okay. If you don't, it's a simple form. It takes just a couple of minutes to fill out. And all we require is that you have something showing a permanent address. So if your driver's license has your permanent address, or if you have just recently moved okay. and it's not on your driver's license in a piece of mail, something showing a permanent address. 
and we give you a card and then you're, we go through all the requirements and all the different things that we do have there so people have an idea for the first time. It's kind of like a real quick mm -hmm. verbal orientation type thing. Okay. And we do have people from all the surrounding counties in Kentucky who are eligible to check books out and we do have a lot of people coming from from Livingston County, from Marshall County and, and, and Graves County, th okay. that type of thing. So they're all eligible to do this? Yes, too. they are. And then also if uh, we have Illinois, which is right across the, board, the river there in Metropolis, and if you work in Paducah, then all you have to do is just bring a pay stub in showing that you, that you do get a paycheck and you do, uh, even though you have an Illinois address, that you do receive a paycheck, you work in Paducah. Okay. Or we also have a lot of people will come over and they'll also, uh, you can buy, purchase a, uh, a card, you know, it's an out of state. Mm -hmm. And you can do twelve fifty for six months or $25 for a year. Okay. We have a lot of people who do that. And going, the requirements, uh, you're allowed to check up 20 items, even on your very first time there. Okay. You're allowed to have five DVDs, five VHSs, even five CDs, uh, five cassettes, and um, the DVDs and the VHSs are seven days, and then we do charge a two dollar fee, fee. late fee after that if you are late after that seven days. Okay. But you do have it free for the whole entire week. So if you check out a DVD on a Sunday, it's due back the following Sunday. Okay. And then all the other books and the CDs are considered reading materials and so they're a 21 day period okay. so that you can have those for. So there's really no reason why people can't get down and make use of these resources, oh, is there? No, not at all. And <laughs> we do have a lot of people who do. It's an incredibly busy mm -hmm. library. Yes, yeah, I, we can attest to that. <laughs> yes. uh, you had something uh, uh, unusual there that you uh, wanted to mention uh, about uh, the uh, about the library. About the library. Well, when I was going through some different books, and after having met you and your wife, uh, and going to your home and seeing all those wonderful little. Uh, cats that you have and I want to <laughs> I want to commend you I really I admire you I think that's wonderful well, and they they were much. all they were all unique and all of them were totally loved but one of the books that that Darlene was showing me there was we were talking about different books was the chicken soup for the cat lover soul yes and I and I said I thought we had it at the library I went back and I couldn't find it so I wanted Keith and I wanted to I went out and I purchased this, and I want to make a donation of of this of this book, and I'm going to donate it to the library. Then I'm going to have them put a sticker in it saying that this is donated in yours and Darlene's honor, so well. people can check so people can check it out at the library. But they'll also see this sticker that it was in honor of you too, because I think what you do is is incredible, and I want to thank you for that. Well, thank you very very much, Darlene, and I are very very flattered. It, it it's a wonderful book, and uh, we just feel very, very honored. And thank you very, very much to you and Keith for uh, that very kind thought. Well, you're more than welcome. Well, in the remaining time that we have, let's begin to look. We've been concentrating on fiction, Anita. Let's now look at some of the nonfiction. All righty. Um, I'm going to start off with some, uh, again, we do have the children's books upstairs. Mm -hmm. We have it broken down into the, uh, I grabbed some junior uh, books. And these would all be pretty much all in the 636 section of the nonfiction area. Okay. And I have everything cat, what kids really want to know about cats. And, and there's all kinds of, of pictures and not a whole lot, you know, to bog down um, the, uh, the child's mind, but enough there to make it interesting for the parent to read the child or the child to read, read themselves. Mm -hmm. We also have one up there called your kitten, a complete pet owner's manual, and uh, the kittens on uh, on the cover here caught my eye, and uh, just pretty much goes in all kinds of detail there about what supplies and that type of thing to get for your kitten. And you had a, a book in particular about integrating new animals into your home. I do. I was able to find, and it, this is down in the adult section, and it, again, it's in the 636 section, and it's called Living with Kids and Dogs without losing your mind. <laughs> Our viewers, I'm sure, will want that one. <laughs> well, I, can, I can imagine having a new puppy and a new baby or that type mm -hmm. of thing, or a, a two-year-old, that type of thing. And there are several things in this book that I was just kind of looking through here, and it kind of told how to, uh, like, 
uh, best friend or bad choice, the right dog for your family. Mm -hmm. It's broken down all kinds of different chapters like that. And then there was also one regarding uh, uh, teaching your children the best ways to interact with dogs, you know, and and I thought as I was looking through this, I thought that this would be a very good tool for parents to think about if they're bringing mm -hmm. home a new puppy and when they already have a child in in the, in the household. In our household, we always had the animals and, and just and had the child and said, here, go with it, that type of thing. But sometimes it's the reverse on that. There's a wonderful book in there called Shelter Dogs. It's amazing stories of adopted strays. And I, I really want to tell people, all, you know, you can go out to your to your people who do the breeding and, and purchase those, but don't forget those wonderful animals who are at the animal shelters that are needing to be have homes. And, and they make wonderful, wonderful pets. We, Keith and I have rescued several of those through the years. And, and and they're wonderful. And in our last couple, three minutes, and boy, this time goes quickly, doesn't it? It does. Uh, you wanted to mention a, a uh, an author, Gladys Tabor. I do. I was, I discovered Gladys Tabor uh, years ago uh, when I was in um, probably even junior high school. My mother had the book, and I read it, and I, probably without a doubt, I would say that she was the one that directed me because I was so impressed with her writing and mm -hmm. she had, she raised Cocker Spaniels, she had Irish Setters, she had show dogs, she lived in a farm in Connecticut and she talked about her animals and she loved them and it had a great deal of influence and unfortunately uh, she died quite some time ago but there are still, we do have some books of hers in the library we can still get them through interlibrary loan mm -hmm. from other libraries but there's this one particular one called Conversations with Amber. And this is about her cat and she had it for years and, and just how, just like you and I are probably talking right mm -hmm. now, she's having a conversation with Amber. There's another book that she did called Especially Dogs. And in this, uh, there are different pictures of, of her puppies that she had during uh, her uh, career of showing the Cocker Spaniels and, and talks about all the different uh, things that they would go through out on this big farm in Connecticut that they had. And then there's a, another one called uh, Steel Cove Jur Journal. Mm -hmm. And she talks about, again, the Spaniels, the cat, and mm -hmm. all that. It just quaint, quaint. It sounds like she's a wonderful author, and, and I th I'm sure our viewers would like to pick up some of her materials. Well, in our remaining minute, uh, uh, Anita, uh, can you tell us just real quickly what you'd like to have people remember from our show today? Well, I would like them to remember the fact that just don't jump in to, to going out there and getting the first dog, or if you see that puppy in the pet store window, I have to have it. Do a little bit of research first. Come down, and, and you don't have to go out and buy the book. We have all these free resources at the library. Come down and look and see what all the different things that we have to check out down there and do a little research and find out what exactly is going to be best for my mm -hmm, family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've heard the horror stories of the people getting the Great Dane and living in an apartment. I mean, <laughs> yes. there are certain there are certain animals that are just absolutely suited yeah. for the need to have space and to run. And there are some yeah. animals that can live in a small apartment or a small space and not have to go out and run. So kind of do a little bit of research and find out that, what is best for you. That is really good advice. And Anita Moore, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. We've just barely tapped uh, yes, the top of the iceberg on the resources. So remember the McCarrickan County Library. And meanwhile, uh, I'm Greg and uh, speaking also for Darlene saying, give your pet a little extra love today and every day. We'll see you next time.